Welcome back to Roche Education, this is Zed. Today I'm going to be talking about M-A-R-K, Mark, Remark Holdings. It's been a while since I've talked about it, literally I think over way more than two months or so. Around this region on July, now comes the time where I'm going to revisit it based on a lot of requests from uh, my followers. Make sure to drop a like this video to help the channel grow, subscribe and leave notifications on. I'm taking extra suggestions for tickers for tomorrow, for Sunday. Make sure to drop them in the comments below as well. Let's jump right into it. In one week perspective, what we get to see here is that it looks like it's attempting a reversal. Now that reversal, we got a hint of it somewhere around 13th of September. And the price was a little bit more sloppy, but it's almost confirmed by, t by this week, by last week. And we get to see that it's actually pushing even further. So if we continue to see this green trend, we might get to see new highs, at least in the last month or so. Now, on, one, uh, on an 80x perspective, what we get to see here is a very strong trend indication around 37.4, although it has been around this level for quite a little, so 80x doesn't give me much of an indication that is reliable. Million percent R puts this one at overbought, and momentum looks like it's actually regaining momentum ever since the 20th of September. There's been green candles ever since then. Now, taking a quick look into a one-day perspective to try to understand a bit the daily perspectives or daily movements, 80x shows in a very strong trend here. William percent R puts this one on overbought. Momentum seems to be incredibly looking nice. It's amazing. Unbalanced volume looks sharp. Volume though itself has increased substantially higher. And so this this is a challenge that in the next trading day, the volume needs to be higher or close. If it drops down, then you're in danger. That's usually an indication that problems or a drop is going to occur. Moving averages looks incredibly bullish at this level. What we get to see here is the potential of, well, initially we had a death star and then we're getting a golden star, which is a very bullish um, sign. Now, taking a quick look into a one hour perspective, what we get to see here on an MACD is that it's actually stabilizing. It looks like a bull flag at this level. Moving averages looks really bullish with a golden cross almost forming here. 80x shows in a very strong trend, although once it hits 50, that's where you can see reversals. 108 to 167, very close to around 60% increase with a bit of a pullback in the extended hours. Taking a quick look into the moving averages, it's way beyond its band. Now it hasn't been really trading within the band extensively, or sorry, exclusively, but just for the sake of the argument, 109 in the bottom, 121 in the middle, and 133 in the top. It's already way above that. Stochastic fast and slow. This one here is quite interesting. So the level we're at right now is very similar to, I would say, this level here. And you get to see we've actually continued to see increases before when there's a jump. But right now it went all the way from way below to almost touching the top. Now, it is very possible that it sees upper highs. I mean, both on the stochastic fast and the slow, they're curving up rather than curving down, and they're more in a straight line and really shows you strong potential here that can be seen in terms of an extra run. Now, how far is that run? Uh, that will need to determine by supports and resistances. Current support is sitting at 151. The next resistance is at 191. I do remember somewhere around here that was really close towards their last earnings. Guess what? Earnings is not far off from this one, and I'll mention that later on in the video. 191 is the next resistance. 230 Fibonacci retracement resistance. 285 beyond that. Support sits at 151 and 103 for the Fibonacci retracements. Now coming on towards the price lines for significant supports and resistance. I'm going to focus onto this area here. Current significant support sits at 159. You get to see it's been tested multiple times before. Following there, in terms of our resistance, we're seeing. Oh, um, we're seeing 168 and then beyond there what we're seeing is the 186 mark that's a very important one and then the 199 now if we were to look even beyond there we're looking at 213 and then 220 244 and then above there we're looking at 259 now resistances here oh sorry supports here what we get to see is beyond the 159 resistance slash support 149 140, 135, and then 131 is a very strong one. Another strong one is 126. Another really strong one is 117, and then below that is 111. And when I mentioned resistance slash support, so support is 
Right now, 159 acts as a resistance because a 15585 is the current price and it dipped a little bit below. But as soon as it crosses it, the re previous resistance becomes a new support. Uh, that's just if you didn't know about that. Taking a quick look into the company's profile all through basically everything I could find. So Remark Holding. A lot of people know it with the AI simplified solutions when it comes towards, you know, the infrared and all that stuff that people have seen a lot. But that is not their entire portfolio. So if you go on their website, go to investor, sorry, portfolio companies, they have basically three three different things on their portfolio. Remark containing share care and bikini.com. And so bikini.com, it stands for itself. So bikinis and um, other outwear essentials that they kind of uh, have under the portfolio. And that's what they're in business for. Next goes on a little bit more ambiguous is share care. So share care, this is their website here. It's not a very responsive website, but still good enough. Um, share care here has basically different tools and health topics. I'm going to go under their, their um, press room here to try to show you what the recent things they have. So teams up with Forms Travel Guide to ensure health, share care tap by Amazon to deliver trusted health, and they added someone new as their chief operating officer. Um, and so it's more of like, in my opinion, it's, it's more of an app-based company. Based Here's their About Us website, uh, page, and if we go down, they have different platforms. Tumors, employees, health plans, and health system. They have real age, real-time tracking, and programs. Uh, they go under different zones. They call them that's a platform is extension. You got virtual reality, diabetes solution, Ornish lifestyle and medicine, share care windows, health data services, community well-being index, and blue zones project. And so they launched a platform for this one here around 2012, and they are strong with around 2,400 employees with 45 plus real age assessment taken, around 30 years above disease management and chronic uh, care experience with around 1.1 million providers. Around 10,000 hospitals and practitioner partners, 180 organized partners, 42 blue zones, uh, project communi communities, and 30 Ornish lifestyles, medicines, and 15 plus million social followers. And some of the partners is inc includes the CDC, American Red Cr uh, Cross, American Cancer Society, Sigma, Anna Enterprise, American Diabetes Society, AARP, American Academy of ophthalmology and you're looking at American Heart Association now they have a bit more details about their blog their work and all that stuff but I'm gonna go not gonna go through there next thing remark entertainment bringing entertainment to China so this one here has a little bit of an interesting thing relating more to apps for instance the um, what else we're looking at different events and all that stuff that basically being uh, it says the company we keep, I'm not sure um, is that under the portfolio because, I mean, they have literally Walt Disney's, Disney Pictures and Alibaba.com. So I'm pretty sure they, they, they mean partners, um, not company under them. So there's that. Um, they have a very small team from what I see, but it uh, still looks like it's one of the interesting companies. And I'm going to go through their About Us page to kind of explain a little bit more into what they go on. And they're about us page to basically saying that they're delivering entertainment to China versus six pillars, key pillars, licensing, talent, social content creation, uh, sorry, 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 social content creation, movie co-promotion, content production. And so basically they say that our agile and handpicked and bilingual team in Shanghai, New York offer the right blend of experience and have their finger on the pulse of emerging trends. Quite interesting there. Next is Remark Holdings as a whole. So I'm going to go through towards their investors and some of the news that I could find. October 21st, they have basically um, mentioned that they, uh, the company that is leading with artificial intelligence, uh, Mark, AI Solution Digital Media, and that's what they market themselves are, uh, as they have a general meeting happening on November 4th to provide time to solicit additional vote to read of aquarium and conduct business now that was basically pushed forward all the way until november 4th and they've re recently received the gp gdpr certification for the ai platform and the family of thermal detection products that's been what the what the entire um previous jump and previous pump way ago because this one was pumped way ago and then basically left up uh, to accumulate on its own 
Uh, it was mainly on the AI and the thermal party, right? And the Remark's AI research and development team, led by Dr. Yang, won three champion awards at ECCV 2020. This just shows in their entire product system works and is affected in the industry. The next kind of thing comes in is how much cash they have. They have, I believe this is in dollars and thousands, so this makes it 1.54 million in trading accountable receivable and 1.617 cash to cash equivalents, puts their total assets at 8.3 million. Um, that's for total current assets. Total assets, including uh, long term, is around 12 million. Now, total liability is 37 million, so their liability is way more than their assets, three times. Taking a quick look into accumulated deficit, you're looking at $349 million. Quite a lot, but when you look all in all, total stockholder deficit, you're looking at $25 million as deficit. And taking a quick look in terms of revenue, you would be expecting that the revenue uh, is actually increasing, especially going on to March. What we've seen is it went from 1209 to 431,000. So that is a decrease in revenue, but we expect that in quarter three to be even better, especially with the AI integrated and the thermal integration in a lot of different places. We've seen a lot of different pictures on Twitter, etc., about this product use. Although their net loss has decreased from 8.8 uh, million to 2.4 million. So on paper, yes, it has less revenue, but their total comprehensive loss is less. It looks tough uh, to kind of back out this, sorry, back this uh, quarter sheet, but I do have a bit more trust into the next one. This is the summer 2020 for Remark Holding, and really what it goes on is their AI platform. So their investment highlight says that their AI powered biosafety solution ranked the top 20 in the world in the NIST facial recognition in the wild bet test ahead of the private market comparable companies valued at a greater than $1 billion. And so their current basic industry that they're served, casinos and entertainment venues, we've seen that as well in Las Vegas, hotels and offices, medical centers, and public safety locations. Next thing they go for is their screening solutions. They have smart thermal kit for rapid fever screening, smart thermal pad with access control, thermal, thermal imaging camera helmet, which is for crowd patrol, uh, patro oh, sorry, patrol. Trump would really love this one here. Uh, Remark Biosafety Fever Detection Kit, um, Black Body Calibrator, Reference Infrared, and basically it's more for surveillance on the thermal uh, technology. Really gives me more of uh, population control vibes and something from uh, Black Mirror, um, especially with the thermal imaging camera helmet with uh, recent uh, protests in all, all around the uh, US. That's why I made my, that, I made my comment there. But uh, let's just pass through that. AI features face counting, face recognition, thermal detection, mask wearing, classification, optional module to be added. Remark by safety, they have key features. I'm not going to go through the exact distance, but uh, basically distance to be measured, um, ideal distance between 2 to 5 meters and distance 1 to 8 meters. So really what it works is mainly indoors because it's IP66 standard for cameras uh, around entries for let's say gates and stuff like that 120 people detected per minute per minute still has uh really good industries to serve including retail workplace safeties and food safeties uh workplaces smart city and public safety in addition to the previous ones like casinos hotels and everything they mentioned before and here's a quick look into their accuracy test including previous other uh, other companies here to put it down they rank in the top 20 and let's take a quick look into, we already kind of gone through basically what industries they're going for. They already have a case study as well on there that looks really promising. I'm not gonna go in details to make sure that my video is not hours long. So the core function is real-time monitoring for helmet wearing, real-time monitoring and early warning for unauthorized access for target areas, and intelligent visual supervision for increasing safety construction. That's uh, sorry, uh, during construction, that's mainly for construction, coal mining industries, inspection, chemical plants, and farms and in terms of the industry itself. Um, another case study that they have and their portfolio in terms of the market. No mentions to, towards their next anticipation for what the market has yet to come, but I did pull up something relating to their 
probable next uh, earning estimate or earning announcement. The earning announcement is estimated to be November 10th based on the Nasdaq website. Their forecast right now is negative 0.04. Uh, and the report basically the uh, that's the one forecast coming from Zach.com. The reported EPS for the same quarter last year was negative 0.11. So there be there is to be expecting uh, sorry they expect more of an improvement in terms of their year per year EPS. Next thing that I want to go on is their actual Twitter account. I do recommend that you actually follow them. One of the massive news is the first time Mark and Intel selling their technology together. Now I know Intel had the price has a massive sell off recently on uh, last on Friday, uh, but taking a quick look into previous news, they do they are kind of on point on sharing what the investors want, want to see. Now what do I think about this company? I really hated the kind of pump and dump that has happened before. This company is known to go for something where they curve up really show a really massive strength and dip same again curve up strength and dip mainly it's towards their earnings and whatnot previously they were around would say all the way down to probably go around here um around 55 cents so around 150 percent increase from their average price point really nice price point in this one here and a very bullish one and what could actually pull up is something very similar to what has happened here now my expectation is a reversal is overdue for this one it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that it's probably gonna still run on, but there's a lot of different people that are voicing opinions uh, that this one here is has really bullish, including some pumpers getting on it. So I do expect that it might be a little bit more of a push. Now the fear off is the sell off because everyone here is putting their fingers on the sell, or at least everyone uh, who's who's traded this one before. Uh, the big thing about this one here that I'm worried about is the volumes doesn't continue if you start seeing lack of volume coming into monday i would sell and then i'll rebuy head off the november 20th uh conference or earning november 4th is as well another meeting so you do expect november 4th and november 10th to be points where you probably see a rise in terms of the price and then a massive sell-off because usually after earnings after meetings they usually have a sell-off for this company here based on observations from before the big thing one here is this does this one have potential looks like it does have potential their uh their portfolio including ai different apps and stuff that still works but they still aren't profitable that's something to be considering i don't think there's an offering yet to come but if there was um uh, definitely it would be more in the vote proxy that you're receiving and that's usually a hint to what it's what, what they're actually planning for what do you think about this sticker make sure to mention down in the comments below share subscribe and like you have a wonderful day